Hey class, today we're going to be taking a look at a concept in chemistry that we call stoichiometry. And we're going to be using ratios, specifically stoichiometric ratios, to determine mass quantities in a chemical reaction. So we're really evaluating a chemical reaction. Now what exactly do we mean by stoichiometry? <clears throat> we're going to be incorporating the use of balanced equations into the conversions that we were already doing with mole conversions. Okay, so we've seen some of what we're about to do, but we're adding in the use of a balanced equation. And this balanced equation is going to help us to, to determine the quantities of a chemical reaction. Those quantities might be moles, they might be masses, they might be volumes. And in order to do that, really the key to stoichiometry is we're using a mole to mole ratio of our balance equation as a conversion factor. Now remember, to find the moles of any substance in a balanced chemical reaction, we just need to look at the coefficients. So the coefficients indicate the number of moles of each substance. So in this balanced equation or reaction, we have four moles of Fe reacting with three moles of oxygen to produce two moles of Fe2O3. Okay, so that's where our mole ratio is going to come from, our balanced equation. Now let's take a look, just make sure that we can figure out the ratio between two substances of moles. So if we're looking here at moles of Fe to moles of oxygen, I just need to look to see how many moles of Fe are there in this equation. Well, there's a four, coefficient four in front of Fe, so that means there's four moles of Fe. In front of oxygen, we see a three coefficient, which means there's three moles of oxygen. Okay? We can set up these ratios between any two substances within a balanced chemical equation. Now let's take a look at uh, relating our product, Fe2O3, to our two reactants, Fe and oxygen. Right? So if we're looking over here now, we're looking for our ratio for the first one between mole of Fe and mole of Fe2O3. For mole of Fe, I'm going to find Fe in the equation and look at the coefficient in front of it, which is a 4. So we have 4 moles of Fe. For moles of Fe2O3, as part of this ratio, I'm just going to find Fe2O3 in the equation, look at the coefficient in front of it, and we see that that is a 2. We can do the same thing for oxygen to Fe2O3. We see that there's a 3 in front of oxygen, so there's 3 moles of oxygen. And we see that there's a 2 again in front of Fe2O3. So we have 3 moles of oxygen for every 2 moles of Fe2O3. That means that for every 2 moles of Fe2O3 that's produced in this reaction, 4 moles of Fe will be used and 3 moles of oxygen will be used. Okay, So we're just going back to kind of interpreting our balance equations um, to start us off here. Now, the process for what we're going to be doing in our first type of reactions, um, which are going to be mole to mole, is we're just going to be converting between mole of substance A to mole of substance 2. And we're going to use that mole ratio to do that. So for mole to mole stoichiometry, we specifically call it mole to mole stoichiometry because we're given the moles of one substance and we're asked to solve for the moles of another. Okay, so we're given moles and we want moles. Okay, so mole to mole stoichi stoichiometry. We're going to use the same equation for all of um, this lecture video. So we're going to take a look at what we have in that bubble on the right. We see moles of given on top, on the left, and moles of given on the bottom. Now remember, this is just how we set up our mole conversions, and the way we set up these units, it's a game of canceling units. Because moles of the given is on top and bottom, moles of the given will cross off, and the unit we're left with there is moles of the wanted. Okay, so this is the same process we've already seen. We're just going to take it to comparing two substances instead of just one. So here's our equation. Given the equation above, how many moles of oxygen are needed to react with 5.42 moles of Fe? Well, here's our plan. We have moles of Fe, and we're trying to figure out the moles of oxygen. So all we're going to do is use the mole to mole ratio, which is what this pink arrow is indicating. We're going to set up a plan for each one of our examples today as we go. So we're going to start with our given, which is 5.42 moles of Fe. So we put that in the top left, just like we've been doing with mole conversions. Our given always goes in that top left um, section. Now we need to figure out what unit are we going to put on the bottom of our conversion factor or of our mole to mole ratio. Well, it's a game of canceling units, so since moles of Fe is on top, moles of Fe also needs to be on bottom. That's the only way that moles of Fe is going to cancel out. Now, we need to figure out what we're going to put on top of this mole to mole ratio, and it's going to be our given. We're looking for moles of oxygen, so we're going to put moles of oxygen in that uh, top mole ratio box. Okay? So we have moles of oxygen over moles of Fe. That's our mole to mole ratio, and now we just need to fill in the ratio with the actual numbers. So to do that, we look at our balanced equation. Remember, that's where we find the mole to mole ratio. In our balanced equation, we see that there are three moles of oxygen. There's a three in front of O2 right there. So we have three moles of oxygen. In front of Fe right here, we see that there is a four coefficient. That means there's four moles of Fe. So we write a four in there. Okay. Now 
we have everything set up. And because we have the same units on top and bottom, moles of Fe, those units are going to cancel out. And we're going to be left with moles of oxygen. Now all we need to do is we multiply across the top, we divide by everything on the bottom, and we get 4.07 moles of oxygen. Okay, let's take a look at our second example. How many moles of Fe2O3 would be produced from the same quantity moles of Fe? All right, so we already worked with 5.42 moles of Fe. We're going to stick with that beginning quantity, that given quantity. But now instead of trying to find how many moles of oxygen are reacting, we want to know how many, how many moles of Fe2O3 are produced if we start with the same quantity of um, iron. Okay, so <clears throat> here is our plan. We are look, we're moving from moles of Fe to moles of Fe2O3 right here. That's our plan, so let's get started. Again, we start with our given all the time in the top left. Our given here is the only quantity that we're given, 5.42 moles of Fe. So that's going to again go in the top left. We need to figure out what unit is going to go on the bottom. Now remember, this is a game of canceling units. So if we have moles of Fe on the top, we need moles of Fe on the bottom. Game of canceling units. Now what are we going to put on the top of our mole ratio? It's going to have to be the mole of what we're looking for, the mole of the wanted unit. Because we're looking for moles of Fe2O3, moles of Fe2O3 has to go on the top there. Now we can plug in our moles from our balanced equation. So now we're comparing moles of Fe2O3, which is right here in the products, and we see that there are two moles of Fe2O3. We're comparing that to moles of Fe right here in the reactants, okay? So we see the four coefficient in front of Fe, which means there's four, four moles of Fe. Great. Now again, it's a game of canceling units. So because we have moles of Fe on top and bottom, they cancel out. And the unit we're left with is moles of Fe2O3, which is what the problem says we're looking for. Perfect. Okay. Now we just need to multiply across the top, divide by everything on the bottom, and we see that there are 2.71 moles of Fe2O3 produced, right? Fe2O3 is a product, produced for every 5.42 moles of iron that reacts, okay? Now, this is what we've seen from a previous learning target, from our mole conversions. Dimensional analysis, or conversions, involving just one substance. So remember, we were using this mole highway, and we were using the equivalency statement that you see at the bottom. One mole is equal to Avogadro's number of particles, is equal to the molar mass, is equal to 22.4 liters of a gas at STP. We use that for the same substance. We could figure out the mass of that substance, the volume, the particles. As long as we had a known quantity, we could figure out any of the others. But to get from one to the other, we always had to go through moles. That was a key, and it's still the key. We always go to moles first. Because now we're introducing a second substance. Now we're still working with our mole highway, but we're going to work with it twice. Two different substances using the mole highway. And the key is what we've just seen in our first two examples, that in order to go from one substance to another substance, we need that multiple ratio. That's the only way to convert between two different substances, is the multiple ratio. We can only convert between them using moles, which is why we always go to moles first, okay? That's the key. We have to convert into moles of a substance, use our multiple ratio, and then we can get to substance B. All right, so let's take a look at an example. Now we're using, now we're gonna look at mass to mass stoichiometry. Now. This is called mass-to-mass -mass stoichiometry, as you guessed probably, because the given is a mass, right? We're given grams of one substance in the problem, and we're asked to solve for the mass of another. So our wanted and our given is mass, or grams, for both of them, okay? This is going to be a lengthier kind of problem, because remember, we are always going to go to moles first. So it's going to add a couple of steps in here. Now let's take a look at this example. Given the equation above, if, if six grams of iron reacts with oxygen, how many grams of Fe2O3 would be produced? Similar to our last two examples, except now instead of moles to moles, we're going from grams to grams, okay? So let's figure out our plan. Um, we have, we're given six grams of iron, we're looking for grams of Fe2O3. So these are the two substances we're working with, Fe and Fe2O3. We have the mass of Fe, we're trying to find the mass of Fe2O3. How are we going to do it? Well, first, we're going to convert from mass to moles, right? Using our equivalency statement, we convert from mass to moles of Fe. Then we can use our multiple ratio. That's how we convert between iron and Fe2O3. And once we have the moles of Fe2O3, we're going to convert right back up to mass or grams of Fe2O3. Okay, so there's our general plan that we're going to follow. At the bottom, you'll see um, on, our, on the next slides, I've kind of condensed this plan into those little colored bubbles so that you can follow along with each of the three steps along the way. So here's our problem. 
we need to, again, begin with our given. The given is the only quantity that's actually stated in the question, and that is six grams of Fe. So six grams of Fe is what we're gonna write in the top left. Great, now we are be ready to begin to start. Again, this is our first step, mass to moles of Fe. So we need to figure out what unit goes on bottom here for our first conversion factor. Because grams of Fe is on top, this is a game of canceling units, so grams of Fe needs to go on bottom. Now on top of this conversion factor, remember that step one, or step A here, is always go to moles first. If you're not in moles, go to moles. Okay, so the first step is we need to go to moles of Fe. Right now, we can use our equivalency statement. This is not a mole to mole ratio yet, right? We have grams on bottom, not a mole to mole ratio yet. So we're not using the coefficients up here quite yet. If we have moles and grams, that indicates that we need to use our equivalency statement, okay? So we're gonna look at our equivalency statement. This should feel like a review from our last learning target. We have one mole of X as part of our equivalency statement. So next to moles of Fe, we have one. One mole of Fe is part of this equivalency statement. How many grams? Well, we look in the equivalency statement up here and we find that grams indicates molar mass, All right? So we need the molar mass of Fe. Now we're gonna have to look at the periodic table to find the molar mass of Fe. And if we look at iron on the periodic table, we see that it has a mass of 55.85 grams per mole. Okay, so we plug in 55.85 grams, and on top, that's per one mole of Fe. Great. Now, again, this is a game of canceling units, so grams of Fe on top and bottom cancel out, and we're left with moles of Fe. Okay? Now, our next step is to go from moles of Fe to moles of Fe2O3. We're going to jump from one substance to the other using that mole-to-mole -mole ratio. So, because we have moles of Fe on top, moles of Fe is going to have to go on bottom of our next conversion factor, and we need to figure out what to put on top. Now you'll see that this uh, blue bubble is reminding us this is a mole to mole ratio. That's how we're going from one substance to the other, the mole to mole ratio. So what unit are we going to put on top? Moles of what? Well, it's going to have to be moles of what we're looking for, our, our wanted unit. We see that our wanted unit, or our wanted substance is Fe203. Okay, we can't quite go to grams of Fe203 yet because we need to do our mole to mole ratio first, but we will have moles of Fe203 on top. Now, this is our mole to mole ratio. Now we're going to use this balance equation, okay? So we look at that balance equation. How many moles of Fe203 are there? Well, there's a two coefficient in front of Fe203. So we have two moles of Fe203. Now for the bottom, for Fe, we see there are four moles of Fe, right? There's a four coefficient in front of Fe. So we have four moles of Fe, okay? Again, this is a game of canceling units. So because moles of Fe is on top and bottom, they cancel out. And we're left with moles of Fe203, okay? Now what next? Here's our last step. We've already done the mole to mole conversion through the mole to mole ratio. Now we're gonna convert from moles of Fe203 to mass or grams of Fe203. That's our last step, moles to grams. So again, it's a game of canceling units. So if moles of Fe203 is on top, that same unit needs to be on bottom of our last conversion factor. What are we going to put on top? Well, we're going to put our give or our wanted on top. We're wanting to find the grams of Fe203. That means grams of Fe203 needs to go on top. Okay. We can again. We're not looking at this balance equation now because notice this is grams and moles in our conversion factor here. It's not a mole-to-mole -mole ratio. We only use balance equation for a mole-to-mole -mole ratio. So now again, we're going to see our equivalency statement for grams of Fe203. We see that we're looking at the molar mass of Fe203. Okay. Well, we need to calculate that from the periodic table, which I've done here for you. We have two Fe's, we have three O's, and that gives us a total of 159.70 grams per mole. Okay, so that's what we plug in. Now for the bottom, we need to look at the moles of Fe203. So we're, again, we're not looking at our balance equation here. This is grams over moles. So we're looking at our equivalency statement at the top and we see next to mole is the number one. So there is one mole of Fe203. Okay, that's our equivalency statement between grams of Fe203 and moles of Fe203. Again, this is a game of canceling units, so Fe203, moles of Fe203 on top and bottom will cancel out, and we're going to be left with grams of Fe203. Now we're going to multiply by everything across the top, divide by everything on the bottom, and that will give us 8.58 grams of Fe203. So that means, and this is very practical for a lab situation, if we have 6 grams of iron, we measure out 6 grams of iron for this reaction to happen, we can actually figure out how many grams of Fe203 should be produced. So if we actually start with six grams of iron, we should produce in this reaction, 8.58 grams of Fe203, okay? So if we were trying to make a specific quantity of Fe203, 
we can use stoichiometry to figure out, well, how much iron should I start with in order to make the desired quantity of Fe2O3? Okay, let's try one more problem. This one, we have given the equation above, if 18.5 grams of Fe2O3 is produced, how many grams of oxygen reacted? So here we just wanna know, I know how much Fe2O3 was produced, 18.5 grams. I wonder how much oxygen was used. Theoretically, right? It's kind of hard to measure the amount of oxygen in the air used in a reaction, but we can mathematically calculate about how much was used using stoichiometry. So here we go. We have 18.5 grams of Fe2O3. So we have a mass of Fe2O3 and we're looking for a mass of oxygen. So here's our plan. We have mass of Fe2O3, looking for mass of oxygen. Our plan is to first convert from grams to moles of Fe2O3. Once we have that, we can jump over using our multiple ratio. We can jump over to moles of oxygen. And once we have moles of oxygen, we can then convert to grams of oxygen. Okay, so there's our general plan. So let's start with our given. This is the only quantity that we're given in the reaction. So 18.5 grams of Fe2O3 needs to go in the top left. That is our given. <clears throat> now we need to figure out, again, our first step, mass to moles, grams to moles of Fe2O3. So what unit goes on bottom here? Well, this is a game of canceling units. So if grams of Fe2O3 is on top, it also needs to go on bottom. On top, remember, that we always need to go to moles first. Okay, so that's our trick, always go to moles first. So we need moles of Fe2O3 on top. Now, we just need to figure out, well, how many moles and how many grams are we going to fill in here? This is not a mole to mole ratio, so we are not yet looking at our balance equation. We need to look at our equivalency statement. Okay, so how many moles? One mole. How many grams? Well, the molar mass. Luckily, we've already figured out the molar mass of Fe2O3 from the last problem, and that's 159.70 grams per mole. Okay, so we plug that in. This is a game of canceling units, so grams of Fe2O3 cancel out, and we're left with moles of Fe2O3. Now, our next step. Once we're in moles of Fe2O3, right here, this is where we're at, we need to convert, using the mole to mole ratio, to moles of oxygen. Okay, so next step is mole to mole ratio. Again, a game of canceling units. Whatever unit's on top needs to go on bottom. And because this is our mole to mole ratio step, we're gonna have to have moles on top. But moles of what? Is it gonna be moles of iron? Or is it gonna be moles of oxygen? Well, it should be whatever substance we're looking for, right? We're looking for oxygen, so we're going to use moles of oxygen. Okay, now, this is our mole to mole ratio. So now we're looking at our balanced equation up here. How many moles of oxygen? Well, what coefficient do you see in front of oxygen? You should see three. So we have three moles of oxygen. What coefficient do you see in front of Fe2O3? You should see a two in front of in front of Fe2O3, which means we have two moles of Fe2O3. Again, this is a game of canceling units. So moles of Fe2O3 cancel out, they're on top and bottom, and we're left with moles of oxygen. Our last step, now we're in moles of oxygen, right? We're right here. We wanna get two grams, because that's what the question is asking for. So we're going to convert Within oxygen, within the same substance, we're going to convert from moles to grams. So let's figure out what unit goes on bottom. This is a game of canceling units. If moles of oxygen is on top, moles of oxygen needs to be on bottom. And on top, what unit? Well, we're trying to figure out the grams of oxygen. So we should probably have grams of oxygen on top. All right. Now we have grams over moles. We need to figure out, well, I didn't mean to do that yet. We need to figure out what quantity of grams, what quantity of moles. Well, we're not using this balance equation because this is not a mole to mole ratio. It's a gram to mole ratio, right? This is our conversion factor. So that's where our equivalency statement comes in again. Next to grams in our equivalency statement, we see molar mass, which means we need to figure out the molar mass of oxygen. This is not a single oxygen. It is O2, the gas, right? So we need to figure out or calculate the molar mass of oxygen which is 32.00 grams per mole, right? 16 times two gives us 32. Remember that we're keeping those two decimal places and our molar masses, we don't drop them, even though they're zeros, we still need to keep them. And then how many moles do we see in the equivalency statement? Well, in front of mole, we see the number one. So we have one mole of oxygen. All right, this is a game of canceling units. So whatever unit is on top and bottom cancels out. So there goes moles of oxygen. And we're left with the unit grams of O2. So now all we have to do is we have to multiply across the top, divide by everything on the bottom to get our final answer of 5.56 grams of oxygen. So that means if I know I produced 18.5 grams of Fe2O3 in a reaction, then I must have used 5.56 grams of oxygen. That's, how much, that's the mass of oxygen that had to have been used to produce the quantity of Fe2O3 that we measured. 
Okay. That is it for stoichiometry. Uh, if you have any questions, I look forward to helping you in class. Hope you have a good day.